What is up? Party people! Welcome back to another Restoration video. Uh, Restoration Druid video. And today we're going to talk about Solo Shuffle. So Solo Shuffle, obviously not my cup of tea, but I do play it occasionally. And I'm not going to lie, as Resto, I have been kind of enjoying it a little bit. Depending on the lobby and depending on if I get if I get a good RNG on the matchmaking. Uh, but... Uh, nonetheless, it is a very popular bracket, and I think it's potential to have a lot of fun, and it's very strong for Wrestle Druid is very strong in it. So I want to go over the stuff that I got today for you guys. So I got talent builds. I want to go over the between, difference between my talents and the the typical talents that you see, stats, and um, general healing, CC kiting, and then a little bit of gameplay commentary. All right. So let's get into it because i got a lot to talk about. So first off here, Solo Shuffle builds. I have two different builds that I use. I will show you them and then I will show you the average, like the most, the more typical builds that you'll see. Um, and then you can kind of choose from there. So this is tip, this is my, my favorite one to play currently. So this is a very CC heavy one. So just the big soda, so I'm not gonna go through every, every talent, but I do have Maim, I do have Bash, I do have, I do go down this side just because I don't have enough points to go down the tankier side. Um, I do have still have Verdant Heart though because that's a very big defensive one when I down the middle row I have a Lakari teaching for the haste and renewal to save my butt um, and then down the boomy side for the increased range on cyclone and vortex all right and um, Big optional talent here improve nature's cure make sure that you're switching this in and out This is a huge talent point like I if I don't need it I could switch this down to innervate or maybe if I'm getting trained, I can put this into Wall and Instincts. I usually don't play this build if I'm getting trained. But uh, that's a big one to look out. If you don't need poisons or curses spells, uh, locks, shamans, maybe hunters and rogues for poisons. Uh, but that's kind of up to you. And uh, yeah, okay, so that's about it on that one. For the spec tree, not gonna be too different for most people. I do play Invigorate over Circle Life and Death just because Surfer Life and Death makes your hots tick faster. It means you have to be more active on your hotting, which means you have less time to do other things. So I don't like it. Plain and simple. It's a little bit more healing, but um, I have a lot more fun. And Vigorate has saved my butt quite a few times, so I'm liking it. I do play Inner Peace just because I am playing a more aggressive play style. So I want to have that fallback to be able to trinket trank. I have a two minute cooldown tranquility to save my butt and not get knocked by Windwalkers. And then, um, yeah, I don't, so I, I usually, most people probably play Wallace of the Assist, and I just kind of swap that there. My second build that I play is going to be if in a build in a game that I can't. Um, cyclone as much okay so this would be more typically in and longer games so this is more in the casters so that first one there when and i do have melee going like usually two or uh, if there's melee if there's two or more melee i'll go that build but if it's a caster heavy so three or four casters i'll typically play this one so this one i still have the stuns i, I am a little bit tankier and i have innervate and i don't have astral influence because i'm not typically being in range of getting these clones in the first place because I'm kind of sitting back and focusing more on the stuns rather than the cyclones, if that makes sense. So the big difference between the two. The other one I do stun, but not as much and more on the cycloning. This build is gonna be not as focused on the cyclones, but more on the stuns to support your casters. Um, yeah, and that's it. Spec trees uh, say, say the same. PvP talents, typically gonna be focus growth and keeper of the grove always. And the third one, reactive resin, is going to be most often used, but if you don't have any purges on the other team, you can opt to play either high winds if you're playing heavy clones. You can play even deep roots with all cat if you're playing with like a lot of casters just to root shit. Uh, maybe thorns with uh, melee, but kind of up to you, but usually it's gonna be resin because there's a lot of purges in this game, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, that's a bit on my talents, but I do wanna just quickly show you guys um the oh let me give you my stats too and then I'll, I'll show you the average so and then my stats just so you are aware i am playing a heavy haste mastery build okay so right now i'm sitting at 50 uh 5055 mastery and 4000 haste and 2600 almost 2700 verse uh and then in pvp combat the numbers of this will be wait why is this a little bit lower Oh, I messed up my gems because at night, Druid gets night elves get an extra one percent haste. Wow, I completely forgot about that. I messed up all my gems. I'm like, wait, why is my haste so high? I gotta fix that. So anyway, my uh, my haste is going to be. I'm should be going for thirty six one, thirty six point one. That's what I go for because that will give me the one point two second cyclone cast. So you'll see right now, I actually don't have it. 
uh, and I'm just underneath it. So I went up to, all the way up to 36.1 is about the threshold for that 1.2 second cast. Everything else is gonna be mastery and verse. So mastery is obviously you're gonna be your prio. I went for that haste break point and then I went all mastery as possible. And if I can't get mastery, I go verse. So breakdown is gonna be pretty heavy uh, mastery and then second haste, then verse. Uh, but the interesting thing here, okay, so this is going to be comparing to the, the uh, this is EU. I thought this was super interesting, so I wanted to share. So the top 10 wrestle jerseys in EU, this is a website called Murloc.io, which is a pretty cool reference website. It's not really used so much in PvP, uh, but it is cool to see because they summarize the top 10 of every spec, or top 50 technically, um, of each spec. So on average here, the stat prio, they, on average, the druids have 2,081 haste. 5,198 mastery and 4,500 verse. So very different from what I have. I have a lot more haste. I have roughly the same amount of mastery uh, and a lot less verse. So super interesting to see. So you can really play either or. If you aren't playing heavy clones, you can definitely drop your haste down a bit more and focus a little bit more on verse just to get more throughput and more survivability. Uh, and then when it comes to the talent, so you, if you look at the orange here, the orange is going to be the more the highest picked talents. So typically you're gonna see them pick, everyone's taking that, uh, almost everybody's taking the the tankier side, which is actually, I don't have in that one build, so. <laughs> uh, down into Well-Honed Instincts, and then the middle going down into uh, Lacari Seasons and Renewal, and then Astral Influence, and down into Innervate. So you'll see that's, that's the more typical build. Very few people, I was really surprised, I, I get a lot of people playing Mame, but dude, not a lot of people play Rake. Maybe there's a lot of Torrens or something. I feel like even just being able to Shadow Ball Drake stun something can be super, super clutch in, so, in Solo Shuffle. I would think you would even at least play Rake or like the opener getting a Rake stun. But, um, and then also, like I mentioned here, this is just to capitalize on that. Look at them. Look at the little amount of people that have impure, Improved Nature's Cure. You don't always need this talent. Most people just sit on this. That is one talent point that could be huge. Uh, you, you know, whether it's Innervate or getting you Rake stun maybe or something like that. So just, uh, just something to look out for. And then when it comes to the spec side, very similar to what I have. Like I said, the only difference is probably going to be Circle of Life and Death is the big one uh, because I don't prefer that. But there are, you know, there are some people that play Invigorate. And then the other one is most people play Wild Synthesis. I'm actually dropping Wild Synthesis to go for Inner Peace. Wild Synthesis is okay. It's not that crazy though. It's probably like an extra 1% to 2% healing uh, versus Inner Peace, which is kind of saving my butt. So I opted to go for that one. Yeah, and the PB talent's kind of same thing as I said. Keep it the Grove and focus growth always, and then a lot of most people play uh, resin there. And they give you some more stuff like gear and stuff, so you can check out that website if you're interested in that. Um, next up here, I just want to go up the go over the general healing, okay? Because um, I know I try to I, I tend typically skip over the healing rotations a lot, and uh, I want to make sure you guys all get it. So when it comes to healing, well, make sure life bloom is always your first thing you're putting on every target because of harmonious blooming, which gives you extra mastery stacks. I don't have to prioritize spamming three life blooms right away. Get one on there and then start stacking up your um, your other hots to get the mastery rolling as well. Okay, and um, yeah, wait, let me uh, make a group here really quick so you guys can see this. Okay, so with uh, life blooms, uh, this is a really awesome weak order that I got. I will definitely share this with you guys. Is your life bloom? So you can't see life bloom stacks unless you look on the frame, typically. But this weak aura that someone gave me for my stream shows the stacks and shows the countdown. If you do not already know this, if you refresh life bloom in the last four seconds, it's going to pop. So you're gonna get that bloom effect, 50k right there. So you want that's when you want to ideally refresh. But there are times where like I'm expecting CC and I may just refresh it like right away. But typically I will try to wait it out if I have three stacks. If I don't have three stacks, uh, you know, I have downtime, I'll just throw up that, I'll throw up all three, right? Uh, but when you already have three stacks, try not to refresh it until the end, unless you know you're gonna get CC'd or something like that, because you do get the extra bloom, which is a nice chunk heal, and it's essentially mana free if you're, you're just gonna refresh it anyway, right? Um, outside of that, just keeping up your hots, man. It, it, it's really not too, not overly complicated. Um, you know, you don't need to put every single hot on them if they're not taking a lot of damage. Uh, but make sure that you are using Swarm on cooldown, you are using Send Ward on cooldown on the main targets. The Rejuves I kind of use as need be. You know, if someone is taking more damage, I'll put more Rejuves on, try to be a little bit mana conservative uh, in regards to that. But, and then the Treants, I use them as need be again, man. Like if I feel like damage is gonna be incoming, I will use it. Uh, you know, if I'm in bear form getting trained, I may use a tree on myself uh, to do that. 
Another thing I do have is a tree in Rigora, which is really nice to know because it'll keep you, it'll tell you when you're gonna drop out of combat. There are a lot of matchups when you are a target to get swapped to, and it's good to stay in stealth for a little bit. Or you want to get a rake stun. Let's say you're playing in a caster heavy meta or caster heavy lobby and you want to get restelts. It's good to know when that tree ends up so that when the tree end falls, you'll be able to drop combat. If that tree ends up, you know you're not getting uh, a restelt. So good to know on top of that. Uh, that's about it, man. I mean, it's really not over complicated. Uh, I guess the other thing I'll, I will add is that um, when you're using your swift min, so you're going to get soul to forest. Make sure you're not wasting that. Like if the target's at 90% health, don't regrowth them. Just throw a rejuve on them. And uh, also if you do spam rejuve, you will overwrite it. So I have, um, let me show you here. Let me get to swift mend into rejuve. Okay, so this is an 18K rejuve. A 6K, if I spam rejuve, it's actually gonna get rid of that big one. So make sure that you're not overriding your, uh, your big rejuves as well. And, um, Invigorate is invigorate is when I have nothing left. I don't have NS. I have some hots on my target, but dude, it could really come in clutch. Like, like let's say all I have is like um, Send Ward and Life Bloom on my target. Uh, being able to just invigorate that, they spamming those hots super fast, and then make sure just to give, give you a quick tip with uh, invigorate. Try to uh, still refresh that Life Bloom, but refresh it out like one second because everything is ticking so fast. If you Swift Mend. Okay, this is actually another important thing. If you have, like, let's say, let's say I have all these hots on me, right? And I press invigorate, my you're gonna see my hots are gonna start ticking really fast. If I instantly swift mend, it ruins the invigorate. It stops it. Okay, so keep that in mind. If you do not want to swift mend it until the very last second, okay? If like, and, and again, prioritizing your life bloom. If the reju falls off, it's fine. But you want to make sure that your life blooms aren't falling off because of the like this. The ramping budding leaves effect of your life bloom so yeah that i think that's it on the healing now uh, okay when it comes to positioning biggest thing is know when you're a target okay if there are games you're if you watch my gameplay there are definitely a lot of games where you're not the target because you have like a shadow priest or a, a modestral lock and everyone's just training them down to the ground those games you can become you can get a little bit more risky and you know pushing in for cyclones clone this guy and to clone this guy and to clone this guy into stun and stuff like that. But there are a lot of comps that will love to swap you. Marksman hunters, for example, or uh, potentially rogues, potentially uh, warriors, things like things kind of just chunk you. So you gotta make sure your positioning is on par with that. What I mean by that, so let's say, uh, you know, this is the target that you're healing over there. You're a pillar humping the whole time. Okay, you do not wanna be uh, open yourself to susceptible CC. And, um, and I, if I am going to push him, what I typically will do, so let's say this is the target that's getting hit, I'm hotting him up, I'm going back behind the target, behind here, I'll light bloom myself, maybe throw a, re a rejuve, and then I'll get a reself and then push in, you know, let's say I do, uh, I stun this one, I bash this one, I go behind the corner here, I clone this guy, and then I'm back going over to my other pillar, get back to the healing. And then I'm back kind of doing my thing back here again. So that's typically what the positioning type of thing is, but I'm always, I always have something to, to fall back on, right? Um, so I have a plan when I push in it's always with a plan I don't just push in for no reason if I'm going into me and let's say I want to clone this guy, right? This is another thing I do to push in so this is uh, let's say this guy's the kill target over here This guy's the off target. I'm going to clone the off target then push in maybe push behind a pillar here Maybe vortex the healer and then clone them something like that So you're giving yourself a little bit of room to move up and not get punished You want to always cover yourself for whenever you do push in for CC um i think that's about it and just make sure you, you know you're prepared right if um if you're typically not the main target and you want to keep the two life limbs on your two teammates that's fine but typically what i'll do is i'll just double rejuve myself and regrowth behind a pillar while i'm dropping combat and then go in and do you know do my thing there go in stun them stun them and like i said when you are cloning make sure you know I, little things like just pushing behind the pillar for the clone instead of standing right here and cloning that you can get kicked i see a lot of druids do that man and I'm like, if all you did was just go right here, uh, you could have potentially just won the game. So, uh, just little things like that. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the position. You'll see a further uh, breakdown on that um, when I do the gameplay in just a second here. Uh, lastly, just CC. CC is really, really important, specifically cycloning, okay? You may not get the opportunity to clone to do as much stunning as you know you might see I do in twos and stuff like that, but it is really important to be active on your cloning. It really it will make the biggest difference, okay? 
biggest things to clone first off if a target is bursting you know right off the start of the game you're going to typically see a lot of people bursting i will typically hot up my target right the, or my the target that's uh, i think is going to get attacked i will sit in stealth wait for them to pop their cooldowns because if you do it open too early you're going to get swapped to almost every time so let them stun you know storm bolt avatar blade storm and then you're going to start positioning stun one i typically always stun one stun two so i'll stun one stun the second one if you find a threat if it's a comp that might swap you like rogue sub rogues love to swap kidney step you right i will open with a rake stealth rake instantly uh, vortex and then just and just start booking it so that i can kind of give myself a little bit of a gap they may double step you but that's a big waste on their end if they do that um yeah and then cloning the healer if ever possible be mindful of the positioning you're going to see this in the game that i'm going to show you guys uh be mindful of the positioning where you're cloning so that you don't get kicked you don't get gripped you don't get charged whatever it may be uh so you are protecting yourself against uh, swaps and just you know being make sure that you're successful on that all right and uh yeah that's about it also don't forget roots roots are good as well when you're versing melee the people just forget to use that and like i've talked about a lot rooting does not put you in combat so if i if i you know if i have all these hots on this target let's say i fully hot him and then there's a warrior chasing him and maybe he's the off target i'll root him once it breaks i root him again i brought him one more time i get a restart now i can go and stun him and then clone him that warrior ain't playing the game and when the warrior ain't playing the game it means i don't have to heal when i don't have to heal it's good times all right so preventing healing is always better than actual healing cool all right let's get into the gameplay here so i have one solo shelf around that i want to show you guys um and just show you guys what the the you know some things that i i do in these games this was just to give you some context this lobby was a pain in the butt this is the shadow priest triple melee lobby and it was very hard fought win almost every game so right off the bat here i did stun him here so i would go for the clone i go for swipe so this was one thing that was unfortunate here i mean you can't really always expect this but he immediately trinkets the clone he did get md2 actually um and they pop everything on me so he pops avatar dragon roar and shit like that so i opted to just trinket trank uh just because of momentum's sake that is kind of a, a tough spot on my end um it's unfortunate there but my teammates start to do their go i'm going to be cloning off targets and getting hots up so making sure life limbs are up that's my priority always getting uh, starting spreading the rejuves treants making sure that i'm safe shadow priest is pushing towards me what does that mean he probably wants to see see me right so i'm gonna back away just a little bit he doesn't have fear at the moment too so um but he does have that so at this point where starts coming towards me i kind of didn't get to do what i wanted to here i wanted to bash him and then pull him down with the vortex i said do it did i do it oh i wanted to clone him but i couldn't get it so i pull him down with the vortex and then i pull away the other side so in these cases where i know i'm not always the target i try to keep the life plumes on them and just keep reused on me but uh, if I do pick up that they really want to go me, I'm going to start keeping life loom on myself. So I charge over to the healer, trying to get away. This warrior unfortunately gets to me. So this is not a good positioning, and I do not have hots on me. So, you know, in this case, this is a big misplay on my end. I should have had a life loom on myself just to kind of mitigate some more of this damage because they're going to be forcing out a lot more stuff for me now because of this. So I pop all that. I have to get forced it to NS, which I really wouldn't have had to otherwise. And now I'm in a kind of a rough position. I should have been able to clone off this. Uh, but because i got this warrior on my ass i really can't do anything slaughterhouse is falling which is good kind of able to get back so now i'm gonna get back to get my hots but now that i know now i know they want to swap me i'm going to make sure that i keep life loom on me and keep life loom on, on the other target that is main target after that once we get the, once the momentum falls on their end i am trying to clone to create momentum on my side so now i'm going to be cloning the warrior there he's the off target so i'm constantly trying to clone him and cc him Getting hots up, make sure life limbs are stayed on my target. So I get silence, gonna just go bear form because they're probably gonna go me. So this was a much better option there. I go for a shadow meld rake stun onto the warrior and book it out of there, right? Okay, get behind the pillar here. Warrior gets over to me, just keep kiting him. Keeping life limb on myself and then my main target. At this point, the Windwalker, and always be aware of your, defend, your, your teammates' defensives, right? Windwalkers have a ton of cooldowns. I'm not super concerned about maintaining every single hot on him. He has Karma, he's got Wall, uh, he's got Port. He should be okay for at least a little bit. Okay, again, Warrior gets off me. My team has momentum. How do I capitalize on the momentum? Cycloning. So I'm going to push in, clone the target that's not involved there. So we're going to clone the Shadow Priest there. We get feared, unfortunately. <clears throat> 
Okay, we end up breaking out. Warrior's back on me. I'm making sure that I'm life blooming myself. Really not a good spot to be caught in. I was going to travel form leap there, but I got caught in the shockwave out of form, which is really bad. But they, we, they do get a good disarm, which helped out. Getting back to getting life wounds on my targets. Getting hots going. See, I'm not super concerned about this Windwalker because I, I have a feeling he's going to press a defensive out of this, right? I am going to end up... Uh, see, this was probably a misplay on my end. I did not need to use all this on him. To just come, you know, think it back now on this. He has karma. I did not need to iron bark him. There was no reason to iron bark him there. I should have iron barked myself here with this... Um, Look slaughterhouse sticking up on me. Okay, at this point here, do not panic. Okay, make sure you're utilizing your your utility. Just because I always say you are avoiding healing, avoiding damage is better than healing damage. It's always more effective. So right here, what can I do? I, I'm gonna kite him out just a little bit here. And vortex, I'm not gonna sit there spam healing. Try to be smart about my utility. Use your stuns, use your cyclones, maybe even force. Also, quick tip here: if you are getting trained like this. Attempt to clone a very fast juke. It will have it will work out a lot of times because the psychology of kicking right when you're about to die and You cast a heal let's say you're at 10% health. This is a risky move, but it does pay off more than not um, If you're about to die people are going to be more prone to kicking very fast They're not gonna be thinking about it. They're gonna kick instantly if you can do that You might get a precog you can get a clone on the warrior boom all the pressure's gone so, so that is also another really good idea. I just didn't feel like I was in a good place to do that just because of the Shadow Priest was pumping his cooldowns. So I'm out of line here. This is not the best spot because now I lost all of my hots on my teammates. Uh, but I do actually manage to get a uh, restealth here. So I actually go for a restealth on one. I was going to main, but he was on um, cooldown, unfortunately. Shadow Priest forced that. We forced out Iron Bark and Dispersion. Getting back to getting hots on me. So I tried to do it right there, what I said. So I tried to go for a quick juke. It didn't work. I'm not going to sit there and spam cast it. I'm going to force this warrior out of line. He doesn't have trinket, so I'm going to go for a stun on him. I was going to clone him, but it looked like they swapped to him. Uh, so I actually push up to clone the Shadow Priest instead. Again, do not be super concerned about the hots, right? So we, we're, you know, we don't have a lot of hots on. We are not full health, but sometimes that cycloning is actually more effective than healing. So we, we uh, Priest ends up trinket swapping onto the warrior, which saves him. Uh, make sure I have hots on myself here because again now I'm kind of scared again Windwalker doesn't have any cooldowns off. He's got well, he's got his wall, but nothing crazy So I'm gonna go opt to clone instead Dampany is kicking up cloning is more effective than healing. Okay preventing the damage in the first place <clears throat> I would have I, I could have actually gone for a second clone there or even a root would have been kind of nice uh, But I they opted to just go for a little bit more healing mana is getting a little bit tough here um, I didn't expect to have mana on this game. So we get a nice leg sweep there. I'm going to actually try to... So this was... Uh, I can't opt to just go for the NS, right? I just played it safe here. So, yeah, I guess playing safe was the better option here just because he was getting pretty low. Uh, if, I, if he wasn't this low, this would be a great opportunity to do exactly what I just showed you guys in the uh, in the, that training dummy is where, uh, you know, I push over the other side of this pillar, vortex this guy, and get a, a secure a cyclone. He was a little bit low, though, so it wasn't that big of a deal. And also something small that I just did there... Um, is I put life limb on my target before I NS. Remember the triple mastery talent? Making sure that you are having life limb up every time that you... Um, life limb is always up when you are re NSing because it's triple stacking, huge buff on the healing. It's actually, you know, potentially 60% extra healing. So, and then we end up securing the kill on that one. So, oh, hopefully... Y'all got something out of that. I got a lot of information there for you. Uh, hope you enjoyed that video. If you do uh, like this kind of content, make sure you guys leave a comment. If you have any questions, for sure, let them down below. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.